Went for a bike ride today. I went further than I normally do. <clears throat> Not saying that it's much, but you go down trails a lot and you're like, I wonder what the end of it looks like. Um, so I live right close. I live really close to the Hank Aaron Trail. Um, and I took one of the trails all the way down and it leads to the domes, which is really cool. Um, because I've seen this side of the trail before, but not coming from like where I live. So I didn't know that those like two areas connected. It's kind of like your map loaded in GTA or something, whatever. We're coming up on the end of July, which is crazy. Um, 2020 has been a very indescribable year. Um, I've had a lot of time to myself, time to myself that I like haven't had in a really, really, really long time. Um, I think now that I've been getting older. old what does that even mean right i just turned 29 i don't know a lot of these worldly events have been making me reflect on things in a way that i probably wouldn't have been challenged to do otherwise so with that being said you know i'm the oldest i've ever been and at this point in my life I also know more people that have passed away than I ever have in my life because I've been here a lot longer. Um, and coming up on a new decade for me, I'll be 30 next year, which is... I've been thinking about life a lot differently. Um, you know, some family members have passed which is inevitable and you know that that stuff's gonna happen but then sometimes you see some of your heroes pass or some people that you wouldn't expect to pass in a quote-unquote normal way like the mac millers and i mean we lost kobe bryant this year um that one really affected me and it's still really affecting me because Kobe Bryant is one of those um, athletes that you never think are going to like. They seem invincible. You know, the Michael Jordans and all them. It doesn't seem like anything can stop them. And then it did. Which was kind of crazy. But when you actually think about it. life waits for no one it's a very unforgiving place and I think sometimes because we're big brained and we have the capacity for very large scale ideas that our pride and our ego tell us that there's like this other thing this other place to be <clears throat> when all this is over and I think sometimes that mentality makes us take this for granted. Because if I think that I'm gonna go to heaven when I'm, when I'm done here, I might not treat my time here like I would have otherwise, I suppose. I'm not trying to challenge people who believe in religion. If you are a religious person and you do believe in afterlife, just don't get caught up in that because there's so much right now and I think we, we skim over the now, when in reality, now is all we really have. Most of us use right now to either reminisce about the past or to plan for our future. And we don't really take advantage of what we have going on right now for ourselves, for the people that we love and care about. I 
had an interesting conversation with a colleague of mine and we would always have these like therapeutic um, like vent sessions with each other. We were talking about death on this particular day. <clears throat> and I remember my friend saying something like, you know, I do believe in something after this. She was like, I can't really fathom not being able to see my family again. <clears throat> she was like, so like, I need that concept to like, you know, keep me going every day. And I think most of us can relate to that. The idea of not seeing someone ever again is daunting. And when a majority of your life finds fulfillment based on the relationships that you have, you know, losing people, it's losing a, a big piece of like a part of you. If there was this grand thing to go to once this was all over with, I just don't think that my body would reject it so badly. My body does not want to die. It wants to continue. Like all life, you know, all life wants to continue. There are autonomous parts of my body that work without me even thinking about it. You know, and those pieces don't want me to die. And I think if the end of this was as glorified as it is talked about, I don't think my body would reject it quite as much, but I'm speculating. It's an interesting idea. I have been thinking about life a lot differently. It's a lot more fragile than we give it credit for. In all actuality, tomorrow I might not exist. That's not like emo of me or, or emotional of me. It's it's the reality. It's that tomorrow I might not I might not wake up. And with that being said, it's like why why don't we take full advantage of this really, really cool opportunity that we've been given? You know? I know we didn't ask to be here, but that's the opportunity, wouldn't you say? Not everyone got the privilege to be born. Not everyone had the privilege to experience any of this. The sunsets, love, coloring, music, art, like, I've seen too many people sit on their deathbed and have regrets. And I've seen too many people on their deathbed say very similar things. And they usually always regret not spending their time better. Why does it always take us to be on our deathbed to want to take advantage of this time more efficiently? If you were sitting on your deathbed tomorrow for some crazy accident, would you be proud of the story you left behind? Or do you still think there's things that have to be written? All we got is now. Don't do that thing later. Don't dream for tomorrow. Don't dream about all these cool things you're gonna do in 20 years and 30 years, because you might not even get there. We all have this idea that we're gonna live the full life expectancy of a human being. And then some, because some of us believe in afterlife. So we think we have all this time. Think about it. 